One, yeah. two, three, four. Eleven courses. All right, so we're on four. We have five more to go. Seven. Seven more to go. Higher math. We're at installation. 187 tiles. Each tile is actually fabricated individually. As we make the tiles, their, their position is, is uh, indicated, is labeled, and they are packed in order, presumably unpacked in order and mounted in order. One of the things that's really interesting to me about uh, doing this kind of work is that um, you know, it's very collaborative. I get to work with a lot of different people in different positions. There's designers, architects, you know, the trades, the guys who actually install the work. There, there's sort of a social element too. It's, um, you know, some of the work goes on in my studio and is somewhat isolated, right? And then, you know, you bring it out into the world and you have to uh, collaborate with others and um, adapt to an entirely different work environment. It keeps it interesting. This is the glass easel. And we spend a lot of time at the easel choosing colors and figuring out palettes and how the colors are going to interact when you overlap them. These are examples of fusible glass that goes into the, the sawtooth tiles. It's all glass that's designed to be fusible. When you fuse this together in a kiln, it's all compatible. It won't shatter when you cool it. I was always making things when I was little. My mother was an interior designer, but she had been uh, an art teacher. She also did textile design, that came later. Go to New York, go to the Museum of Modern Art, go to galleries, it was just something that we did. I don't really understand what it means not to have that. You know, it's just so much uh, part of me. You know, in high school I was the class artist. So when I went to RISD, for example, it was a rude awakening to discover that everybody there was the class artist and everybody, you know, was better than I was. <laughs> so, you know. I started with traditional, do, doing traditional stained glass, or traditional in terms of the technique, not necessarily the graphic aspect of it. Well, as an undergraduate, uh, I was studying painting. And the paintings I, I was making were very uh, atmospheric. They were built up of you know, layers of, of color. The glass that's used in traditional stained glass embodies many of those characteristics. It, it has that atmospheric color, it has bubbles and striations, it has some you know, surface texture or activity. And I think I was also drawn to the, uh, the process or the craft aspect of it. The idea that you, know, you began with a solid material that refracts light, that you could hold, that would cut you if you're not careful. And there was a, a sequence of, of techniques that you followed to sort of achieve the final result. And when it was done, it was done. At a certain point, I realized I wanted to work in contemporary architecture. The, the limitation of, of stained glass is that it's so closely associated with you know, medieval and Renaissance religious architecture or Tiffany. I wanted to work in contemporary architecture. You know, I felt the way to do that was to lose the lead lines and to really express the materiality of the glass. A lot of the work I do is what I call my sawtooth glass. So it's essentially tiles, handmade tiles, that have a, uh, a sawtooth relief. A typical tile is about uh, six inches wide and ranges in length from 12 to 18 inches. And the sawtooth breaks the plane of the glass and it creates some mystery as to the, the depth of the glass. It also imparts a tactile quality. Like I think we respond to uh, color and pattern 
and texture. And so whatever else a piece may be, those elements are important to me. Often I'll start with you know, a gesture on paper done in a very sort of impulsive, unself-conscious way. We cut the strips of glass according to that, that diagram. So for assembling based on this diagram, we'll have all these strips of glass. They get laid up in order. So this is what goes into the kiln for the initial firing. Now this is an example of four layers of glass that's been fused together. So this is the first firing, and in the second firing, it goes into a mold like this. And it's fired a second time to a higher temperature so the glass really uh, gets soft enough to slump into the mold. And then I make the tiles oversized so they can be cut down you know, to the precise dimension. You know, sometimes I feel very much like an art director or a project manager. I mean, that is a lot, large part of, my, uh, of, of the work I do on a day-to-day -day basis. The pieces are the result of, you know, the labor of many different people who bring many different skills and, and, and talents and experience and, you know, knowledge to the project. So it allows me to envision projects that really exceed the limits of my own my own skill and, and knowledge you know I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to uh, you know to collaborate with others my evolution as an artist has been really an unconscious process of, of backing into things you know I've been fortunate to encounter certain people, artists, you know, at various points in, in, in my career that, you know, sort of moved me in a, in a new direction or inspired me or, or mentored me, opened my eyes to the possibilities of glass, for example, or, or even aspects of my own work that, you know, maybe I was not fully aware of. You know, I never made a deliberate decision to uh, work in glass or to do the kind of projects that I'm doing now. Yet when I look back on the work that I've done, it does seem to follow some logical trajectory. And uh, nobody's more astonished about that than I am. <laughs>